Hello, my name is Ethan Scott and welcome to The A-List. Joining me today is David Condon, the owner of Colorsmith Stained Glass. Welcome, David. Hello, Ethan. So first of all, we're going to start with how you got started in staining glass. Well, when I was in college, a friend of mine who worked at a stained glass studio on the West Coast uh, visited me in Chicago and uh, brought in a bunch of uh, glass and uh, tools and gave me short instruction and I set up a workshop in the basement of my home and I did that while I was in college for three or four years and after that I got a uh, position with a large stained glass studio on the west coast. Um, I worked for them for five years and basically served an apprenticeship uh, where I learned the more advanced skills of stained glass. Mostly they did churches up and down the coast of California, some churches in Nevada. One big restoration we did in Honolulu and um, uh, Oregon, Washington, mostly on the West Coast. And it was a good education for me. I uh, learned how to paint the glass, which was uh, a very advanced technique, and all the uh, skills associated with building a leaded glass panel. So. I understand that you have your own glass stain studio now, so what journey did you have to take to get to where you are now? Well, after five years with the studio on the West Coast, I decided to relocate to uh, the Midwest where my family is, and uh, I started my own studio with a partner. We had um, we started small, we had some uh, small commissions and then built on that, and uh, finally started landing the church jobs that uh, I enjoy so much. and. Um, it uh, was basically from scratch. We figured everything out as far as running a small business, as far as uh, planning and uh, em employees and uh, uh, all the uh, things that y you have to have in place, uh, legal and accounting, things like that. So what have been some of the ups and downs of your career? Well, uh, at first it was, uh, I, I will admit it was a struggle. We were. Uh, always looking for work, um, but uh, after about five years, we were pretty well established, and uh, the phone starts to ring, and we uh, found ourselves involved in some interesting uh, commissions. We would work for uh, a lot of uh, oh, uh, a lot of churches, a lot of uh, historical uh, 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 restoration people. We would work for architects, uh, interior decorators, and uh, we started to land some more prestigious types of commissions where we would be responsible for, say, restoring uh, Frank Lloyd Wright windows or Tiffany windows, uh, the things that uh, you really have to know what you're doing to, uh, uh, to accomplish. So what are some common projects that you guys usually do? Our work is mostly residential still. Uh, the churches account for about a third of our work. Residential work accounts for almost two thirds. Uh, the rest is types of commercial jobs. We did a local restaurant, Lalo's, uh, a lot of glass in there. Uh, a lot of local jobs, uh, but uh, mostly residential. And that's pretty well split between existing homes and new construction. The new construction, we do a lot of entryways, a lot of bevel glass, colorless glass. S most of the time we're working for builders and they are usually building a spec home where they don't want anything too definitive as far as color or design, so they get some more formal, uh, traditional type designs. And the older homes are uh, usually a little bit more fun. We use more color and we do all kinds of windows. Uh, entries are big, landing windows, bathroom windows because stained glass will give you privacy. Uh, kitchen cabinets, we have done multiple uh, commissions for skylights in homes. And uh, we used to do kind of peripheral stained glass projects such as lamps. But uh, in the last 20 years, there's been an influx of uh, very inexpensive Chinese work. And uh, it's pretty well made, so we, we, we don't really uh, have an interest in that much anyway. So we, we kind of let that part of the 
So how long does it usually take to complete a common project? A common project will probably take, well, the actual construction may take a day or two. The process leading up to it, which would be the visit to the site, the designing, the uh, gather, uh, selecting the glass and purchasing the materials, and then actually after the construction there's some finishing work on the panel and then the installation. So that all varies, uh, but I, I would have to say the, the bulk of it is right about the two, one or two day range. Uh, although we have had projects that we spend 30, 40, 50 days on straight. Okay, uh, so how is stained glass made? Can you just go over the process of how you make it? Sure I could. Stained glass is a, uh, an ancient traditional skill craft and it is almost unchanged since it started. The, the process that we use is we'll start by presenting a design. After a discussion with the client, we'll find out what they want to see, what their concerns are, um, uh, subject. This is a, a church we're working on now in Westchester, Divine Providence, and they requested the apostles. This is half of the uh, windows, or not quite half. And they are, uh, uh, we'll, we'll render a design like this. And this will be what we follow when we build the windows. These are about one-fifth scale, I think. The actual windows are 20 inches by 40 inches. So we'll take these patterns and we will enlarge them into our working copies, which we call cartoon. It's uh, a black line on a white paper, and that black line represents the lead line, which is shown here as a black line. The lead line is what we cut the glass to that shape, and then we also do the assembly, which is the letting up. So each piece of glass is selected from a colored sheet, laid on the pattern, and we cut to that line. After the glass is all cut, then we put the pattern on the bench, we start putting the glass in, and then putting in an H-profile lead strip uh, along the edge of each piece of glass, and then fit the next glass in on the other side of the H. We cut them with a lines meet. After all the panel is leaded up, then we will solder each joint where lead meets lead. And then it's a matter of uh, we brush a waterproofing cement onto the panel, and a couple days later after that's dried, we clean it off, and that will darken the lead, give it a dark black finish. Uh, I have some finished panels here. The uh, lead when it's in a finished state, it looks something like this. Now this panel is a sample panel we use. It's got a lot of clear textures and some colors, and in the center of the flower we used a slice of agate stone, which is transparent, and anything that transmits light actually can be put into a, a, a leaded glass window, as long as it's not uh, uh, something like plastic, anything that would deteriorate. The glass really never fades or wears out. It's a permanent thing uh, unless it breaks. And if it breaks, it can be replaced or in some cases uh, repaired. Um, this piece, this, you can see the lead and the solder joints and the darkness of the lead. And it's a weatherproof panel. It's fairly strong. And this particular piece was designed by a designer in Chicago, David Sisko, and I work a lot with him. He'll come in with a project off in a church, and he will have done the design. I will do fabrication only and installation. As you can see, some of the glass has got like streaks in it and white uh, uh, areas, and that's all put in, in the manufacturer. We buy the glass in colored sheets, mostly made in the United States, although we do use some European glass. And we have a huge selection. It's, it's, um, it, it's really gratifying. If you're after a color, it's kind of easy to find close to what you're looking for. Now this panel here is what has been painted with a texture 
and fire. That's permanent glass paint. You see this often in church work. It's used to shade the glass, and in this case, it's used to make the glass look like it's a uh, thousand years old and dirty and antique-y. Uh, and, and you see that a lot. It's, um, the painted glass is an advanced technique, and that's how we get the, say, the features of a uh, figure window or the folds in the garment. It's painted on the colored glass and fired in a kiln and becomes a permanent part of the glass. So how many people are needed to create a project? Well, really only one person. However, once you, it's a time-consuming process. Uh, every, and there are not too many shortcuts. So after a point, once the projects get big enough, then you need a, a, some help. Right now we have six employees and they all have their strengths and weaknesses and they will do most of the fabrication. I still uh, am mostly design, uh, involved with the design work and uh, after the design work, the coloring, selection of the glass colors, I'll usually hand that off to a, someone who can cut the panel and then may, somebody else may let it or they may let it and somebody else may cement it. So it's, it's a division of labor, but uh, we try to mix it up to keep things interesting. So what tools and equipment are needed to stain glass? Not too many. The tools haven't really changed since the Middle Ages. In fact, if someone walked in from the 12th century, I could put him to work today and he would know what to do in my studio because the, the glass hasn't changed. The glass cutter is now a steel wheel that puts a score on the glass and then we can snap the glass along the score. Before the steel wheel was invented in the 1800s, it was a hot poker drawn across the glass which would cause a heat fracture. And that was kind of inaccurate, but then they would take a pair of grosing pliers to nibble away the uh, larger, uh, the get it into the shape of the uh, cartoon. So the leading up requires a lead knife or a pair of uh, sharp lead snippers, which is another new advancement. And the other only new tool being used is a diamond grinder, which can be used to shape glass. But uh, that's probably not necessary. In fact, none of those except for the basic cutter and grosing pliers are necessary uh, and a lead knife to create a stained glass window. So speaking of the history of stained glass, where did stained glass originate? Well, nobody seems to know for sure. They think it may have evolved from some sort of metal work in the Middle East. And then kind of uh, the first windows they've discovered are from the 800s or 900s. And already they show a pretty evolved technique. So it may have been around for a couple years beforehand. The craft was perfected in medieval England and France and Germany, and that's where it probably reached its full flower in the 12th century when they started building the big Gothic cathedrals, and they had big windows in the cathedrals and a theological imperative to make use of the light, and they began to fill them with huge expanses of stained glass. And they perfected most of the techniques at that point. The silver staining didn't come along until the 14th century, and that's another kiln fire technique. And that's where stained glass gets its name because uh, the uh, painters would uh, stain the glass with a silver stain, which gives a bright gold color. And that's kind of the nomenclature that's uh, just stuck. Uh, alternately, you can call it leaded glass, art glass, things like that. So are there any other purposes for stained glass besides decoration? Uh, it, stained glass is almost purely decorative. Uh, you, you see it in windows mostly, and then you can see a lot. People will make anything out of stained glass. I've seen waste baskets and pen holders and uh, ornaments and uh, all kinds of things. Uh, cabinet windows, tabletops. Uh, you name it, somebody's tried to, try to make it in stained glass probably, but mostly windows, skylights, that type of thing. So we know you have a f you've had a few interesting jobs over the years, and the first one we'd like to talk about is your time at the White House. Can you elaborate on that? Oh, sure, yes. Uh, three years ago, we built stained glass panels for the White House in Washington, D.C., the uh, Obama's 
We're working with an event planner out of Chicago, and she saw our work at the Lurie's Children Hospital Chapel. We did a large expanse of stained glass windows on the 13th floor there, and she thought they would work for the Obama holiday decorations that they do every year. So we built four large uh, circular windows overlooking the Rose Garden and uh, four smaller ones for the state dining room. And in November, we went out to deliver the glass and uh, oversee the installation. And they were hung up and very well received. Um, the First Lady had a reception for the artist who helped decorate the White House, which is a big uh, affair. Every year they have 100 volunteers from all 50 states, and they come in, and in three days they decorate like 37 Christmas trees in, inside the White House and all the other types of decorations. And uh, there was a um, kind of a thank you dinner that uh, the First Lady hosted, and I got to meet her, and she complimented me on the windows, and they were very well received, and they'll probably wind up in the Obama Library after his term is over. And I also read that you've worked a lot on Frank Lloyd Wright houses in the area. Can you talk about that, too? We've done a lot of restoration, a little bit of replication where the windows have been missing. We have worked uh, um, on very significant projects at Unity Temple, at the home studio in Oak Park, and mostly at the Roby House in Hyde Park, which is probably the, the pinnacle of uh, the prairie style. He actually put 176 leaded glass windows into the house, and we have restored more than half of them over the last 10 years. And it's a very nice work to deal with because they're expertly crafted windows. They are still in fairly good shape. They don't need a huge amount of restoration, but they do need attention. Any stained glass window needs some kind of maintenance uh, periodically, typically on the order of 50 to 100 years. You have to address it, which is a long time, but they last thousands of years. So you mentioned before that if you're beginning in stained glass, you worked on all along the West Coast, but mm -hmm. recently have you had any jobs or projects outside of the Chicagoland area? Well, let's see. We uh, restored a set of church windows that went to Ames, Iowa about three or four years ago. Uh, last year we put windows uh, into a church in Joplin, Missouri, which were also restored. The uh, windows originated on the East Coast where they were closing churches and they were salvaged from those churches brought to us for restoration. We, in some cases, resized the windows and then delivered them and installed them on site. We just shipped a set of windows to Biloxi, Mississippi, and we've uh, shipped windows uh, pretty much all over the world. We've sent windows to Italy, to, uh, to Ireland, to uh, a lot of places in the United States, Colorado, West Coast, uh, Florida, Texas, places like that. And significantly in this area, the last few years, are interesting projects. I mentioned the Lurie Hospital. Uh, we actually did some work at a few high schools in the area. We did a large panel for Lyons Township High School in LaGrange, the South Campus. And we last year we put windows into Adlai Stevenson High School in Libertyville over their front entry. All right, well, thank you very much for joining me today, David. I'm Ethan Scott, and you've been watching The A-List.